in this video we are going to discuss about uh, Indian physiography uh, geography part uh, second lesson basically in this lesson Indian physical features we are going to discuss about you know India has uh, many different uh, land features like mountains, plateaus, landforms, plains, valleys coastal areas and many more since India has uh, different uh, types of uh, land features fundamentally the geographers has uh, categorized uh, four types of uh, physical features that is northern mountains northern great plain the peninsular plateau coastal plain islands there are four basic physical features first uh, let's check it out main uh, points first that is northern mountains these northern mountains are Engfold mountains highest mountains in the world Northern mountains are highest and Engfold mountains. These mountains comprises peaks, valleys, glaciers and passes. And uh, this northern mountain range from Brahmaputra river gorge up to it is uh, from uh, Indus river to the gorge Brahmaputra river total length is 2400 kilometer 5 lakh kilometer square area and uh, this northern mountains has uh, three types of ranges greater Himalaya lesser Himalaya and Sivalik greater lesser and Sivalik first check it out uh, that is uh, greater himalaya greater himalaya's innermost and continuous highest mountains in the world these are innermost continuous and highest one of the very important uh, peak that is uh, mount everest that is in greater himalaya having uh, 8848 meter some more peaks are kanchanajunga Davalgiri, Manaslu, Nanda Devi and many more these uh, greater Himalayas always covered by snow throughout the air so we call it Himadri we have to remember why greater Himalaya is called Himadri because it is covered throughout the air with snow and uh, these greater Himalaya home of many glaciers Gangotri and Emonotri Gangotri the birthplace of Ganga river and uh, many more passes in this region located in uh, greater Himalaya second one is lesser Himalaya lesser Himalaya located south of the greater Himalaya south of greater Himalaya that is lesser Himalaya this is also called Himachal greater Himalaya is called Himadri lesser Himalaya is also called Himachal and uh, many more ranges Pir Panjal, Dawaladar, Masuri, Darjeeling, Mahabharat these are parallel ranges valleys are there in this uh, lesser Himalaya Kashmir Valley, Kangra Valley, Kulu Valley valleys hill stations are there Shimla, Raniket, Masuri, Nainital these are hill stations and uh, Darjeeling we have to remember which are the hill stations which are the valleys those are located in lesser Himalaya Shivalik hills this is outermost Shivalik are outermost or also called foothills of Himalaya because those are uh, very lesser too lesser having a very limited height foods of Himalaya that is Shivalik 
एंड दीज आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड आउटर हिमालय शिवालिक आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड आउटर हिमालय एंड द लोएस्ट माउंटेन्स द हाइएस्ट इज वन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड मीटर हाइट लोएस्ट वन एंड वेरी फ्लैट एट बॉटम दीज माउंटेन्स आर वेरी फ्लैट एट बॉटम स्ट्रक्चर्ड वैली सच काइंड ऑफ लैंड फीचर इज कॉल्ड डोन्स वट इज डोन्स वी हैव टू रिमेंबर फ्लैट एट बॉटम स्ट्रक्चर्ड वैली नोन एज डोन्स वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लेस दैट इज डेहरा डोन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस लैंड फीचर इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ हिमालय वाई द हिमालय आर वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट दीज एक्ट लाइक नैचुरल फ्रॉन्टियर बॉर्डर नैचुरल बॉर्डर and prevent foreign invasion prevent cold winds which blow from uh, central asia prevent cold winds and keep india warm abstract uh, rain bearing winds cause heavy rainfall i mean uh, orographic rainfall orographic rainfall takes place here because of existence of himalaya heavy rainfall takes place because of existence of mountains thick forest and ideal for uh, plantation crops forest covered in this area plantation crops easily can uh, can be cultivated storehouse of minerals himalaya is a store of of minerals and birthplace of many rivers even falls too and uh, because of uh, falls easily can generate hydroelectricity so importance of himalaya northern great plain the second uh, important physical feature northern great plain where it is located it is located between himalaya and peninsular plateau how it is formed due to depositional work of river system so where it is how it is formed very important this is the largest alluvial soil tract in the world very important thing L- largest alluvial soil tract uh after this uh, amazon uh, soil uh, alluvial soil tract is there this is the largest one about 7 lakh km square this is the very fertile plain area very fertile plain even rocks not exposed to the surface what is the importance of northern plain economically how it is important because northern plain suitable for irrigation and agriculture agriculture and irrigation many perennial rivers flow there and because of the flow of perennial rivers fertile alluvial soil has formed there which is a uh, favor for agriculture land is very level level land because of level land there in northern plain support for network network of roads rail and means of communication very easily can develop there because of land is flat and very useful for industrial and urbanization and trade purpose many pilgrim centers are there in the northern plain kasi varanasi badrinath kedarnath many more let's go move to the third uh, physical feature that is uh, peninsular plateau it is the largest physical division remember largest physical division oldest landmass which is related to gondwana land gondwana land which is a uh, very oldest one 16 lakhs kilometer square the total area of uh, peninsular plateau this is roughly triangular in shape and it is extended up to K- uh, cape of kanyakumari and it is bounded by many more uh, uh, hills and uh, peaks aravalli vindhya and satpur western ghat eastern ghat and chota nagpur plateau malwa plateau these are uh, very important land feature which is surrounded by peninsular uh, plateau western ghat western ghat and eastern ghat these are the very important thing 
continuous range running parallel to the west coast of India that is Western Ghat. Western Ghat is located in western part of India, western coastal place of India. And uh, these western Ghats are also known as uh, Sahyadri Mountains. And many more passes are there in western Ghat, Bor Ghat, Thal Ghat and Pal Ghat. And uh, many more uh, uh, here ranges are there. Anamalai and Palani and Kardamam Hills and very highest peak in uh, Western Ghat that is Anaimudi highest peak in South India uh, about uh, 2695 meter height Eastern Ghat Eastern Ghat runs parallel to the east coast those are extended from Mahanadi river to Nilgiri Hills and uh, these are very lower than the Western Ghat these are not continuous. Western Ghats are continuous. Eastern Ghats not continuous. Height is low. And highest peak in uh, Eastern Ghat is uh, Armakonda. That is the uh, highest one in Eastern Ghat. In Western Ghat that is Anaimudi. Even in South India that is the highest one. And uh, we move to the Deccan Plateau. Deccan Plateau this feature land feature is bounded by satpura vindhya and satpura hills northwest western ghat in uh, western part and many more uh, hills surrounded that is mahadeva and michael ranges so chota nagpur plateau many more things are there but uh, we have to focus on what is the importance of uh, deccan plateau what is the economic importance of Deccan Plateau that is we have to focus on it can be asked for two marks as well because uh, four or five points are there why it is economically important because rich in minerals it is forest covered and many more biodiversity is there and it is influenced by southwest monsoon winds it is covered by black soil useful for agriculture and this is uh, birthplace of uh, many rivers south indian rivers particularly useful for generation of hydroelectricity south indian rivers are very favorable for generation of hydroelectricity because uh, these rivers form many falls and these are well uh, known for hill stations for example uti uti is one of the important hill station tourist attracted place in Tamil Nadu these all things we have to write for uh, what is the importance of uh, Deccan Plateau economical importance of Deccan Plateau let's move to the east coast and west coast here uh, I would like to bifurcate differentiate between west coast and west coast and east coast western coast and eastern coast first of all western coast western coast lies between Arabian Sea and Western Ghat. Eastern coast is extended from Savarnareka River to Kanyakumari. Western coast extended from Ranafkach to Kanyakumari. Eastern coast it is located between Eastern Ghat and Bay of Bengal. Western coast is uh, narrow, steep, rocky. Eastern coast this is broad not narrow broad many rivers flow across eastern coast for example Mahanadi Godavari and Krishna river Kaveri river run across eastern coast have uh, western coast have two parts that is Konkana coast Karnataka coast and Malabar coast three Konkana Karnataka and Malabar coast eastern coast there are many lagoons I mean uh, salt water lakes formed in the coast very close to the coast those are we call lagoons salt water lakes which are close to the coastal area we call them lagoons for example Chilka Lake Pulikat Lake Koleru Lake this is the differentiate between western coast and eastern coast what is the importance of coastal region this cost this uh, question is appeared in board exam what is the importance of coastal region economical importance 
this coastal region provides us natural harbors which helps for trade purpose foreign trade for example marmo goa kochi and uh, kandla these are uh, very important uh, harbors through which uh, foreign trade takes place useful for fishing ship building agriculture salt production tourist attract places are there it is useful for navigation coastal region what is the importance this is a very important thing last one is islands of india there are many islands very uh, very important 247 islands are there this figure is important many more times asked this question 247 islands are there 204 out of uh, 247 204 are bay of bengal 43 and are in arabian sea some of the very important are lakshadweep island and andaman nicobar island lakshadweep island you know in arabian sea those are formed by coral andaman nicobar is formed by volcanic activities so this is all uh, we have discussed in this session thank you for uh, listening my lesson thank you one and all